Hello, welcome to the Bakwas channel for self-paced tutorials on Internet of Things. This presentation is an introduction to the Arduino Giga Display Shield. The Arduino Giga Display Shield is a touch screen display screen for rapid deployment of visual solutions that use the Arduino Giga R1 Wi Fi board. It has a 800 by 480 RGB touch screen and it supports many popular graphical user interface frameworks. This presentation will cover the key features of the display shield. The example sketches demonstrate starter exercises from Arduino with the Giga display shield as the user interface to the Giga R1 Wi-Fi main board. The display consists of a 4-inch thin film transistor liquid crystal display that has a resolution of 480 by 800 RGB pixels and a capacitive touch screen. The backlight screen can display up to 16.7 million colors. Bosch BMI 270 6-axis Inertial Measurement Unit or IMU for precise acceleration and angular rate gyroscopic measurements. It has an intelligent on-chip motion triggered interrupt features. The microphone is an ultra compact low power omnidirectional digital micro electromechanical system microphone built with a capacitive sensing element and an integrated circuit interface. It has a 64 decibel signal to noise ratio with omnidirectional sensitivity. The RGB LED has an I2C interface that is easily controlled from the main board. It is a common anode device. The two primary input-output connectors are the Giga main board and the camera, which is separate from the display shield and the main board. There are two user frameworks, LVGL and GFX. LVGL supports animations, touch and many widgets for user interaction. GFX is a very popular graphics display library.
the three primary connectors to the display shield are for the camera, video, and touch gestures. The touch display supports five points and gestures through an I2C interface. The two sensors are the inertial measurement unit or IMU and the digital microphone. The RGB LED support is an I2C interface with pins on top of the display screen. The display shield requires 3.3 volts DC power which is delivered by the Giga main board. All onboard logic operate at 3.3 volts DC. The RGB LED driver includes an integrated charge pump for the I2C interface. The edge backlight intensity is controlled by the LED driver. All official integrated development environments or IDEs are supported by the Giga board, which drives the development of sketches for the display shield. There is the legacy 1.8 IDE, the contemporary 2.2 IDE, the web and cloud editors, and the command line interface or CLI. A Giga R1 Wi-Fi board is a prerequisite to use the display shield. Apart from the core libraries for the Giga, a few graphics and sensor libraries are needed. Most of the graphics libraries are installed when the main graphics package, Arduino Underbar Giga Display, is installed. The only exceptions are third-party libraries such as the Arducam Underbar DVP package. The suggested libraries are Arduino Underbar Giga Display. This library contains several tested examples that will work with the Giga Display Shield. This library is also required to use the built-in RGB, which you can read more about in the RGB section. Upon installing this library from the Arduino IDE, the following libraries will also be installed. Arduino Graphics, Arduino Underbar Giga Display Touch, Arduino Underbar BMI 270 Underbar BMM 150, Arduino Underbar Giga Display GFX. This last library is based on the popular Adafruit Underbar GFX graphics core library for drawing on the Giga Display Shield. This library is great for drawing geometrical shapes, printing text and values, drawing pixels, and so on. It is recommended for beginners. Arduino Underbar Giga Display Touch. The library manages the touch controller of the Giga Display Shield. This library is required for the reading touch points on the screen and is needed when using the LVGL framework. Arduino Graphics. This library is required for drawing operations on the screen. It will also install the LVGL library, which is required for a large number of examples by Arduino.
connect the camera to the connector on the top front of the display shield. Owing to symmetry, the 20-pin connector can accept plugs at the back, but only connections from the front will enable the camera to work. In other words, the camera must be facing the same direction as the display. For the initial test, the simplest exercise is to read a frame from the camera and then render it on the display. In other words, the display will show what the camera is imaging. For this exercise, depending on the camera, some software libraries must be installed. This slide illustrates the key libraries for the ArduCam camera. The Arduino Underbar H7 Underbar video is part of the Arduino core package. The three cameras currently supported are HM01B0 for QVGA monochrome for ultra low power use, HM0360 for VGA monochrome for smart vision applications, GC2145 to pixel color up to 1616 by 1232 pixel resolution. The Arduino Underbar H7 Underbar video library manages the video output by providing functions to draw primitive graphics elements on the screen and integrate third-party video libraries such as LVGL. The microphone has many uses. Stream the data, plot the data, display the volume as a bar, detect noises. PDM converts analog signals into digital one-bit stream. The three example sketches provided by Arduino are Plot the data captured by the microphone. Change the color of the display when a clap is detected. Display the volume of the sound received by the microphone. The IMU is a Bosch BMI270 smart ultra low power chip that is marketed for wearable devices such as hearables, smart clothes, smart shoes, smart glasses and ankle bands. It combines precise acceleration and angular rate measurement that is gyroscope with intelligent on-chip motion triggered interrupt features. It is ideal for integrated plug and play step counter detector for wrist worn devices. The IMU significantly extends battery life by handling multiple activity tracking independently of the system processor without having to wake it up. The example adapted from Arduino samples for the Giga demonstrate the manipulation of an image on the Giga display shield using data from the IMU processed with the LVGL library.
the RGB LED device on the display shield uses the I2C interface. The software library to drive the device is Arduino Underbar Giga Display. There are three basic methods. Begin to instantiate the device. On to specify the red, blue, and green intensities for the device in the range from 0 to 255. And off to turn off all three intensities. The first demonstration initiates rendering on the display shield. The second demonstration introduces the touch features of the display shield. The third demonstration draws images on the display shield using simple graphics primitives. The fourth demonstration uses the display shield's microphone to detect clapping sounds. The fifth and final demonstration leverages the display shield's IMU to keep the orientation of an image in its original viewing position even though the user is rotating and tilting the display shield. Giga camera display is a hello world type exercise to demonstrate that the display can interface with the Giga main board. The first thing we have to do is install the Giga libraries for the display. If you go to library manager and enter the search keyword Giga, you will notice that there are three libraries that are displayed. Let's go ahead and install the first one and in the process all the dependent libraries are installed also. So it's a good idea to select all there and allow the system to install all the libraries related to the Giga display. Once this operation is complete, you will notice that the second and third libraries shown on the screen here are also installed. And after this is complete, the best thing to do is to run the compiler again and see if there are any other additional libraries that are required to complete the processing of the simple Arduino sketch. So we go ahead and compile and you'll see immediately that an ArduCam library is not installed. So let's go ahead to the library manager once again and type in the search keyword ArduCam and see what we get for the Giga. As soon as we type in ArduCam, uh, it comes up with the underbar DV library and if we install that and go through the process, there are no further dependencies so at this stage all required libraries are complete and you can compile the program and see that it compiles successfully. So then let's go ahead and upload this to the board. Once the program has been uploaded to the board, we can see that the display turns on and the camera starts displaying 
whatever is presented in front of it. Here we are displaying another gadget and it shows up on the screen clearly. Of course, ignore the fact that the image is upside down and flipped around. This is a simple hello world exercise and the process of flipping the images uh, we will be covered in a later demonstration. So here are some examples of doing it in a portable manner. So we disconnect it from the desktop and use a battery power uh, to connect to the board and uh, supply the pow required power and operate the display. So the display shows up here clearly and we can go outside also just to demonstrate the fact that it becomes a portable device if you have a, a battery holder attached to it. Go drawing example. The focus is on using Arduino graphics to display on the screen. And we will step through each of these key elements to show you what happens when you issue these commands. So, first of all, we include the two necessary library header files the Arduino underbar H7 underbar video and Arduino graphics. We instantiate the display with an 800 by 400 resolution and the reference name supplied is Giga Display Shield. I have moved this code from setup to a separate function so that we can call it over and over again. This is not necessary but just to keep the demonstration simple. So the first step is to initialize the display by issuing a begin draw command. Then we clear out the background which is and we send the signal to clear. After that we do a fill setting and draw a circle whose height and radius are shown here. Once that's complete then we draw the inner circle as a series of concentric circles. The circles are an approximation to the actual Arduino logo which as you may notice is the infinity sign and not the circle but for easier understanding and representation in this demonstration we approximate it as two circles. So the circles are done with this loop and then we go ahead and draw two horizontal rectangles. One side will represent the minus sign and the other one is the first part of the plus sign. And then finally we draw the plus sign and conclude the display. This essentially is very simple and what we do is we just call it once and set up and there is nothing in the loop because there's no point repeating the same things over and over again without any change. So I hope this is a very useful introduction to you for the display begin and draw at the starting and ending points and then we have methods like background, clear, fill, circle, uh, the stroke and then rectangle. Uh, there's a bunch more others and uh, we will dive into these later on. So I hope this is useful for you to understand how to draw very simple graphics with the Arduino graphics package. This sketch demonstrates the use of the LVGL library for a user interface. We're going to use a simple example of a slider bar to demonstrate the first example. So we define the entity and then create a simple grid again using the LVGL library and within the grid we create the slider bar. So we create a cell and then we tell it 
to have a bar with some given dimensions and the initially the animation is off. Then we instantiate an animation object and give it a value that every three seconds in the range of 3000 milliseconds it will go from 0 to 100 and back. That's the an and it repeats indefinitely. So let's go ahead and upload the code to the Giga and see what it looks like. So as you can see, it's presently, let me just fix this here, yeah. So it's sliding back and forth, three seconds, and it's an indefinite loop, but obviously when you read the values, you can set it wherever you want, and essentially it acts like a slider bar. So very simple demonstration, but shows you some of the power of the LVGL library when it's used with the Giga Display Shield. In this demonstration, we will look at using the LVGL library to display a button. So we go ahead and ensure that the touch detector is on also because it's a touch screen and we want to interact with the button. And as before, we create a basic grid and center it. And then we create the grid for the buttons. There will be three buttons, and the first button, uh, it'll have the text Alpha. The second button will have the text Bravo. And as you can see here, we marked it as checked here. So that button will show up as being checked. And then the third button will say Charlie. And that's all we have to do. Uh, and we define the style of the button. Also, of course, you know, we have some control over that. I don't want to get too much into that, but are some very nice ways of using LVGL to customize your own uh, widgets, as they call it, or graphic elements to support these buttons. So let's go ahead and upload the sketch to the Giga. And as soon as that's done, we'll go ahead and look at it very briefly. So it's uploading and right now it's taking a few minutes to show up and there we have it. So you can see the three buttons that we defined, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie and the Bravo button was checked. Let's go ahead and check Charlie now and you can see we can check Charlie and and the rules for, you know, we can say, okay, check only one button or all buttons and in multi-check. Multi all those things are part of the LVGL suite, and I hope you get some time to look into it. So very simple demonstration again, and we'll continue with this with some other widgets. In this demonstration, we change from a radio button to check boxes. Everything else remains the same. So the library is still the LVGL library, and we're going to use the touch on the screen to interact with the buttons that are displayed. So we go ahead and define the initial grid and then the grid for the buttons and the checkboxes that will be displayed. Uh, slightly simpler definitions in here. So all we have to do is say the checkbox alpha, checkbox bravo, and we've got that checked. So it will show up as checked and then we have Charlie. So again, the three checkboxes with the middle one checked. Let's go ahead and upload this uh, to the Giga. And you can see that the three check boxes, as before, instead of radio buttons, we have check boxes. And we can interact with the check boxes by selecting them individually. And again, depending on the rules or things that you've set up, you can have multi select or single select. So, fairly simple demonstration of uh, a couple of the key elements for a user interface the slider bar, the radio button, the check boxes, and the button. So, Hopefully, you can go ahead and create some very useful uh, UI for your own personal use.
for the microphone demonstration, we'll use the simple PDM library to detect the sound and then display a color on the screen. So we go ahead and initialize the shield since we're going to be displaying it on the screen and then we go clear the screen and start receiving the data. As soon as we get the data, depending on, we'll cycle through first of all the red color, then the green color, and then, you know, set the blue color. So we cycle through these red, green, and blue colors for each sound that it detects. There's nothing particular about the sound, but think of it in uh, terms of a keyword spotting device for future extension. So let me go ahead and upload the code and now we can go ahead and turn on the video and then say hello giga and you can see the colors change to blue the next color is going to be red so we'll say hello giga and becomes red and we say hello giga and we're back to green so if we keep using the sound as, and cycle through it um, for this simple purpose just detecting a clap or a sound is more than enough but for future extensions, we may want to send it to something like an Edge Impulse or Tiny ML and do proper keyword spotting. This is all for now for the microphone demonstration. In this demonstration, we will look at the Arduino Giga Display GFX library. We instantiate the shield, thin film transistor, TFT and then assign some constants for the colors that we want to use, set up the serial communication, send a simple message, and then initialize the screen and start printing the values that we have, like text, lines, rectangles, circles, filled in circles, triangles, rounded rectangles, and essentially repeat that as many times as possible around the different corners of the shield. So let's go ahead and download or upload the sketch to the shield. And in doing so, we will go ahead and um, So you can see the test repeats itself over and over again around the different corners of the shield. Uh, this is very popular in testing um, for quality assurance purposes, whether the shield is working or not. The Giga Display Shield supports the rendering of 3D objects. It is a tandem operation. The Giga R1 Wi-Fi board does the calculations. The Giga Display Shield renders the results. The Giga R1 Wi-Fi board is the engine and the Giga Display Shield is the dashboard with the added advantage of a touch screen to interact with the results. The library for this purpose is still in early development. It is called TinyGL. It is based on the popular library called OpenGL that has supported advanced graphics on workstations for several decades. Of course, in addition to TinyGL, there are two other key libraries to support 3D graphics on the Giga systems, the LVGL and the Arduino Display Touch. Let us look at two examples of 3D graphics on the Giga systems. The first one is Gears 
and the second one is a further enhancement called Gears Plus. Both examples are from the Arduino Tiny GL library. The first example displays rotating gears. It is impractical to discuss the code that generates the gears in this introductory demonstration. It is best to limit the demonstration to touch screen interaction. However, it is important to note that the Giga environment can handle these 3D graphics operations reasonably well. The viewing point for the image on the screen can be changed by dragging one's finger across the screen. The second example displays a wireframe rendering of a robot moving forward. Touchscreen interaction with this display, just like the previous example, changes the viewing or observation point. The main purpose of both demonstrations is to illustrate the use of rendered or shaded images as well as wireframe models. The Giga environment accommodates these advanced graphics demonstrations owing to the tiny GL library that is still in the development stage. Of course, the future looks very promising. This tutorial was a basic introduction to the Arduino Giga Display Shield. The features of the shield were enumerated. Some prerequisite library packages were installed. And then a few example sketches from the Arduino libraries were run. We've only just begun. The custom applications leveraging the display shield are under accelerated development, of course. That's all, folks. Please provide feedback in any which way you can. This presentation was prepared with assistance, as noted on the slide. My apologies if I have unintentionally omitted anyone or any resource. A very big thank you to y'all. Come back to the channel soon.